if I upgrade, what am I getting? That's a good question. This is Henry Clark's channel. My channel is called Senior Musicians Unite. And I'm talking about band in a box. And I'm talking about upgrading. Now, upgrading is a personal choice, you know, and everybody has their own perspective on upgrading. Now, me, myself, a lot of people have come to my channel and they have asked me, am I upgrading to 2024? Well, in short, the answer for this year is no. I usually upgrade every year, but this particular year, I'm not going to upgrade. And the reason why is because I have not found the features in 2024 compelling enough for me to upgrade. Like I said, that's a personal choice. But what I thought I would do is, and I'm up to version 2023, by the way. But what I decided to do is that a lot of times the upgrade can depend on the features that you would like to have. Now, in my particular case, this is just my opinion on upgrading. That's all it is. But I thought there's some information that would prob probably be good for you all in case you're thinking about upgrading. So upgrading, a lot of times, they always have you know new styles. They always have new real tracks and things like that. But it's the features that I think are the most compelling. So what I thought I would do is, because a lot of you guys on my channel are using much older versions, 2008, 2010, 2015, 16, or whatever. So I thought I would start from 2021, 2021 is what I would thought. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the features from 21 through 24. And features for each version automatically roll over into the next version. So there could be a feature in 2021 or 2022 that you would like to have that would make upgrading to 2024 worth it. And I hope that's not confusing for you. But just so you know, so I'm going to start from 2021. And in 2021, Bad in the Box came out with utility tracks, which was, I think this was like the coolest thing they ever did because you only had eight tracks initially, but now they gave you another 16 tracks. And these 16 tracks, you can put, you know, real tracks on them. You can put MIDI on them. You can do all kind of neat stuff on the additional tracks that are called utility tracks. So I thought that was really, really a cool thing when they did that. So that was like the number one thing that stood out to me in 2021. They also had a feature called Auto Fix Sour Notes. Sometimes the notes will get a little sour, they go off a little bit right, and you could click a button and you could auto fix those sour notes. I thought that was kind of cool. Not something that happened to me a lot, but if it happens, it's nice to be able to get through that. So that's called Auto Fix, and it had improved rendering. Used to be, when you want to render a WAV file, it took a lot longer, but in 2021, they improved it so it renders faster, and the default bit depth was 24-bit. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that's what kind of brought my attention to 2021, which I thought was really neat. So remember now, the things in 2021 are going to automatically roll over into 2022. So in 2022, they came up with all tracks being equal, which means that all of the tracks have the same capabilities. All 24 tracks have the same capabilities, real drums, loops, or whatever, which gives you a lot more flexibility when you're composing your track, because of course you can have more instruments inside of your track. So I thought that's a pretty neat feature. They also had what, we, what they called multi-riff. You know when you play, a, uh, like you play a song, you compose it, you put a rhythm guitar in it, whatever, right? And that rhythm guitar will play a, a certain style of a lick, and then you generate, and that lick is different the next time around. Well, in multi-riffs, you can actually assign that particular riff you like to a certain set of bars, so you didn't have to worry about it when you regenerate. That's a cool thing. I liked it a lot. I did find it a bit tedious, though, when you start talking about doing a lot of different riffs on an instrument through a lot of different bars in a song. You had to set it up accordingly. And, of course, bar settings did not work on utility tracks. But the multi-riff function, I thought it was kind of a cool function. Me personally, I prefer to do it in my DAW, in my DAW. But you could do it within the console using the original eight tracks for multi-riff. So that was kind of a cool feature. Another thing it had, it had volume automation. 
And in volume automation, you will go to audio edit and you can actually edit the volume on each individual track. You know, you can raise it, you can lower it, you can use crescendos, you can do all kind of neat stuff. Again, it's a nice feature to have. I thought it was a bit tedious to do it for every track, but it's still a nice feature to have if you want to compose directly within the Band in the Box console. So that's kind of a cool feature. And one thing it had that was really nice, it had drum stems. So it came with 50 sets of drums that had individual drum stems. And what drum stems are, are individual drums. In other words, uh, individual bass drum, snare drum, hi-hat, whatever, room mics, the whole nine yards, right? So what you can do, and I actually had a video on how to use these stems, but what you can do, of course, is that maybe you just like the kick drum. Maybe you want to replace the kick drum. You could do that, or maybe you want the kick drum separate in a certain part of the song where you want just the kick going or just the snare going. So you could use drum stems, and you could extract those drums from the set you're playing if it has those stems in it, and you could kind of compose your song accordingly. So that was nice. Also, it has some full vocal songs. So kind of if you're struggling trying to put a good song together, they actually created some great performance songs with real vocals, and they're under the performance um, directory, if you want to call it that, right, when you go into Band in the Box. And you could actually take and listen to those, and they may help your song composition a bit because now you can hear some full songs created in Band in the Box. Now, I will say that the vocals in those songs were probably not treated from an effects perspective in Band in the Box because they sound a little bit too good to be just Band in the Box. But the songs are really good. Not A lot of the songs are not necessarily to my liking, but the performance of those songs, I think, is really, really excellent, to be honest with you, you know. So it has that. And again, that can help you a lot when you're trying to compose songs or maybe you got a mental block or something like that. So that was a cool thing also. So that's in 2022. Now, let's move to 2023. And again, all of the things I talked about in 2021 have rolled over into 2022. All of the things I talked about in 2022 have rolled over into 2023. So now when we get to 2023, which was last year, and last year they had what they call partial track regeneration. Now different tracks have different variations on how they play. Well, with real track, track generation, you can only generate, if you want to, only a certain set, a certain part of that track, and you can get any of the variations. Now they claim that there are 40 variations on any real track, which I say claim, but it's probably true. You know, but you can do partial track regeneration to regenerate. If you didn't like the way the guitar played that particular passage, you could regenerate just the guitar part and not worry about everything else regenerating without going and freezing the track. So you could do that. It had auto save, and auto save is kind of a neat feature because it prevents data loss, right? You know, um, you know. So it has that. It had playable real drums, isolated drum tracks, and it had master volume automation. So now you can take the whole song. You can fade it out, you can give it crescendos, you can generate chords, songs, previews, you can do all of those things. So those are neat little things now. Not a lot of the things that I personally would use, however, they can help you out quite a bit. So that was 2023. And remember, these are the only things that stood out to me. So it's, it's not all the features, it's not all inclusive. God, that would take forever to do in a video. But those are the things that stood out to me as far as the, you know, as far as the actual program goes. Now 2024 has rolled around. This year has rolled around. And it's got a new look. It's got a new tracks window, which gives it a doll look. Heh, you know, because I do it in my doll anyway. That's why I say it like that, right? But for some of you, that could be a really, really neat feature to have. It's got floating windows. <clears throat> so you can have more than one window open. You can take and, and move your, your master volume, your, your, you know, your tracks over into a certain window and, and chords over to another window. It's kind of that, it's that Microsoft thing where, you know, you got Excel open in, PowerPoint open in. Word open well, it's the same type of thing. It's got a multi picker libraries window where you can pick tracks from eight different types, and this is cool. Now, this I think is really cool in 2024 is that previously, if you use bar settings to put your song and arrange your song together, and by bar settings, I mean you know how you can mute certain passages of the song on a certain instrument, things like that, right? But you couldn't do it on utility tracks. If you did it on utility tracks, you had to use audio edit. Now in 2024, the bar settings apply to all 24 tracks. That's really cool, especially if your song employs um, shots and holes and rest and things like that, 
because before you had to do it in the first eight tracks. Now you can do it in all 24 tracks. So I think that's a really, really cool feature for 2024. It has custom MIDI tracks and faster generation window, right? Again, so it's getting faster and faster with generating those WAV files for you. And that's kind of cool. And it supports Lyric Lab AI. I'm not a huge AI fan. I'm not, and I, don't, I haven't experimented with Lyric Lab. Um, I'm still kind of in the old realm of writing my own lyrics, of course. Now, sometimes I may use some chat GPT to try to help me generate a song. It never lines, it doesn't line up, of course, with the song itself, but I'm not big on that anyway. Sometimes it, is, it gives me some inspiration of lines that I had never even thought of. Depends on how well I write the question in ChatGPT, you know. So AI is coming, AI is here, you know, AI is good, as, as some people think, you know. Um, I don't want musicians to totally ignore the potential of using AI because it can really help you out sometimes. But at the same time, I'm not the type of guy to be dependent on AI. And I'm also not the type of guy. I don't I don't use the lyric windows in my band in the box songs. Um, I call myself, I call myself a singer, you know, and because I am a singer, I don't lock myself into the phrasing of the original phrasing of the original lyrics of the song. I may take and drag the word over to the next bar. I mean, I do all kinds of crazy stuff. Matter of fact, rarely do I sing a song the same way twice, you know. So I'm not big on on having things in the lyric window. And plus, I don't usually write songs for other people. I write songs for myself. But it, Lyric Lab is probably a nice thing to experiment with if you like that. So that's 2024. So again, what this is about is this is about the features that you get in each version that you may not have had before. Like if you have 2023 and uh, bar settings for all 24 tracks is an important feature for you, right? That's nice to have, you know, then you may consider upgrading. That's not important. You might want to stay or you may wish to stay with your 2023 version. But if you have something like 2019, 2018, you know, you have missed out on utility tracks. You have missed out on bar settings. You have missed out on audio automation. There are a lot of things that a lot of improvements that have been made that you have missed out on. And if you upgrade to 2024, you will get all of the things I've talked about from 2021 on forward. So that's what this is about. So and I think that's probably an important part of your decision to upgrade or not versus just looking at you're sitting on 2017 and you look at 2024 and you go, hey, you know what? I don't know what that stuff, right? The, all of the things that you have missed in between, you know, 16 and 24 may give you a good reason or not, or not to upgrade. So that's what this is about. Again, this is about whether you, what are you getting if you upgrade? That's all this is all about. And the decision is personal, of course. Like I said, I only talked about the features that jumped out at me. These features may not jump out at you, or you may want to go to, you know, to the page in Band in the Box and look at other features that may be more compelling for you than what I have presented here. So that's what this is all about. So I hope this helps you guys in making an informed decision on whether you wish to upgrade or not. And hopefully it serves you well. Again, this is Henry Clark Channel, you know, Senior Musicians Unite. I hope you like what you hear. And I also hope you subscribe to my channel. I can always use more subscribers like anybody else. And I will see you guys later. Okay, 